it's time to do a video that I haven't done actually in ages because this is the first and as such I will try and update it because I feel that I have done this video as my first video and I genuinely feel that it would be kind of cool to update it I won't mention all the same series and all the same books from that video I will just say that 90% of them still stand. I think the only one that I maybe would remove is like Harry Potter and maybe, though I hate to say it, the Winter Night Trilogy, which it's still one of my favorite books of all time. However, upon many rereads and a lot of reflection, I've realized that I actually really hate the fact that that story incorporated a romance. I just do not think that it fit in there and since it's a large part of the plot I feel like it goes down in my eyes like a tiny tiny bit just because of that aspect of the story but on the whole that video stands it definitely stands and even though it's a little bit awkward to watch because it was my first video I'm going to keep it as the first part this is technically a part two and I feel like making just a favorites of all time, an updated one, adding the stuff that I've read since 2020, which is now four years, I feel like it's a great way for either new viewers or old viewers to like review and see if they even like the books that I like, because this is like a comprehensive list of everything that I love in literature. So I feel like it's very telling of me as a person, because everything that's your favorite kind of really explains what you like and what you gravitate towards so without further ado i will maintain the f i will maintain <laughs> why can i not speak i will keep all the ranting to a minimum each book will get like a minute two minutes max for me to talk about them so let's go i will be dividing this into like books and then manga simply because I wish to sort of separate the two however there will be some overlap so I will make chapters in any case so you can hop around if you like genre wise but the first two things that I'm going to talk about I will be very brief about because I've talked them to death and that is just the Alan Moore duology so to speak which is these two I will just speak about this one, obviously, first. I've spoken about it enough on my channel in general. So, love of my life. Genuinely love of my life. I prefer it of these two. However, I've reread this one more. Beautiful story, wonderful dialogue, beautiful artwork, lovely drawings, and just the message, considering that it was written in the 80s, and it still hits is such a delightful thing. Again, I always describe this as a more hopeful 1984. If that's your cup of tea, I think this will be the only two graphic novels that I talk about. So if you need recommendations, yeah, just do pick up Alan Moore. Do pick up Alan Moore. It just is, it is what it is. Like it's, it's this newspaper-like style. And it has beautiful illustrations. The one thing I will say is that there's a lot of english slang and accents so if you're not good with that maybe i don't know read the audiobook although it's a graphic novel so read everything out loud that you can't understand if you're not from an english-speaking country like beautiful stunning 10 out of 10. now the less favorite one is obviously this i do read this every summer though like i say this every year i read this every single summer because in a very weird way, because all of these characters, most of these characters are actually fairly morally gray. It's a comfort story for me for some reason. I've grown to love this <laughs> in ways that I feel it would be embarrassing to describe. I just want to read this every summer. This also has a phenomenal message and it kind of deconstructs the meaning and everything wrong with the superhero genre. I love it for that reason alone. This is the only superhero anything that I've ever actually objectively thought was good. And the characters and the villain and the entire ending and just the writing of this, like I, 
vendetta has a more important message overall but the way that this was just built up and what it sets out to do is wonderful wonderfully done the characters all nailed genuinely it's a great 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 graphic novel and there's a reason why ironically a lot of people in the superhero genre since he wrote this have been trying to emulate him even though he was essentially making fun of them if that makes any sense so yes wonderful adore it this is also probably the only thing on this list that has a phenomenal adaptation so yes <laughs> those are the graphic novels the next genre will be fantasy now i could have gone and get i could have gone for the paperbacks however i want to i do want to show you this copy every time that i can because it's stunning first of all i love when hardcovers don't have dust jackets it's a pain in the ass <laughs> for dust dust jackets on hardcovers because you pretty much never when you read them are going to use the dust jacket and it's just annoying i love it when there's beautiful print on the book itself now this obviously has like a ribbon and it has illustrations this is just a wonderful beautiful stunning copy now as far as earth goes i will also be very brief with this because this Aside from Tolkien, who was in the last video, this is my favorite fantasy world of all time. In a way, better than Tolkien, you need to sit down <laughs> if you're a Tolkien fan, because so am I. There's no immersion quite like Tolkien. But the world, this world I would actually live in. I'm not sure I would want to live in Middle Earth with all the orcs and Sauron and, you know, I'm not sure, and not school. I'm not sure I would like to live there <laughs> because the majority of the story in that world we see through war. This, however, is my favorite fantasy of all time world because there's no war, because she doesn't put conflict there except the conflict that you find within yourself, with yourself. That's why this world is one that I want to live in. The magic system stunning just the whole concept of words having incredible power and i don't know why i have this thing about true names it's usually in demonology where like if you know a demon's true name you're going to control them however just the, the fact that words have power and that names are something special that you only tell to your loved ones and the way it's described and the sea and the forest and I keep saying she is Studio Ghibli in book format and I feel like I need to keep saying it because because just wow okay again if we ignore the existence of Tehanu and half of the stories in Tales of Earthsea the other four books masterpieces masterpieces of fantasy writing okay I know she's known for sci-fi but I don't actually like her sci-fi. I just love her fantasy. But every, there's a special feeling every time I look at this and remember the world. There's objectively not much in this world, actually. Like, this entire book, kind of like Tolkien, actually. Like, yeah, without all the appendices and Silmarillion, Lord of the Rings and Earthsea, these are all seven books, can fit inside one tome like this. And you're like, why is this so short? How are these detailed intricate worlds that you can feel like they're real fit inside this short this short book <laughs> so yes it has similar to tolkien in terms of i want to live here i want to be here i want to do this magic i want to travel the seas i want to go through all the islands well not all of them but i want to see the dragons this <sighs> there's just no feeling quite like quite like earthsea for me every time i look at it i'm like this is this is what i want from fantasy this is genuinely what i want from fantasy like this and lord of the rings are the blueprints for immersive fantasy they need just 20 pages for you to feel like that place exists so yes this is i needed to praise ursula a little bit because i feel like i don't praise her enough ever since i read Tanu. and the second fantasy which i hesitated to add this because i don't think this would be one of my favorite books of all time but i will tell you why it actually might be 
it's this. <laughs> this. Again, just the first book. You, you know this if you've read it last year. I feel like everything by Sapkowski, this is also historical fantasy, but I'm putting it in here. Everything by Sapkowski, for me, again, this is my favorites of all time, for you to get to know me, I feel like this is my humor. This is so my humor. Like, there's a random creature that shows up at camp to listen to stories and then just leaves. This entire book and everything that Sapkowski has written, my sense of humor. So while this necessarily wouldn't be like, this is a masterpiece, the greatest book ever written, my favorite book of all time, that's why I said there's a bit of a an asterisk to this, I would still consider this a very representative showing of why I love it. The Witcher is better, but The Witcher is in the first video. I just wanted to add this because I feel like if you read either this or The Witcher, you would understand. You would understand why I love Sapkowski so much. This this humor also laced with depth is exactly what he is good at. So I needed to highlight it, even though I wouldn't say this is my favorite book of all time. The next category are classics, which I don't think I had a single one in the last video. Maybe like a few of the children's classics were in the last video. However, let's just quickly go through these again. I'm speeding through this video because I feel like I've spoken about all of these books to death. However, I want to compile them in one place so you can have kind of like a, you know, <laughs> jumping off point from whether you think highly of my opinions or not. <laughs> anyway, the next one is obviously Jane Eyre. This is a horrible book to show off, I will say. So, Jane Eyre. <laughs> my favorite romance of all time. It's a little bit upsetting to reduce this book to just a romance, but my favorite romance of all time, ever, okay? There's a line at the end of this book that perfectly encapsulates what I think of love and soulmates and of partners in general in life. There's a line that she says, like maybe a, a paragraph, where I'm like, that, okay, that is all that I want. You've nailed it, Charlotte. I'm actually gonna just try and find it so you can have it here, you know, as proof that I'm not just bullshitting you. However, hang on. I know it's like one or two pages from the ending. I'm gonna do my best. Where is it? <laughs> There it is. Yes. Mm. No woman was ever nearer to her mate than I am, ever more absolutely bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. I know no weariness of my Edward society. He knows none of mine, any more than we do of each, any more than we do of each of the pulsation of the heart that beats in our separate bosoms. Consequently, we are ever together. Now this is the quote. I had it as my profile picture for like so long. To be together is for us to be at once as free as in solitude, as gay as in company. We talk, I believe, all day long. To talk to each other is but a more animated and an audible thinking. That, okay, that I... Mm, Charlotte has managed to describe everything I believe about love. And that is why... This is one of my favorite books of all time, and it's forever going to be. Let's quickly go in order. This one, which I feel like I haven't talked about in a while now, <laughs> Anne, Anne of Green Gables. This is just Anne of the Island, because I think it might be my favorite of the trilogy. However, the, tri the trilogy, yes, the trilogy, the entire thing is phenomenal. A masterpiece, atmosphere building, nature writing. I don't think anyone has come close to... L.M. Montgomery, except maybe like Tolkien, <laughs> but masterpiece, beautiful, stunning. One of my favorite trilogies of all time. Again, one of my favorite romances of all time. I think it used to be my favorite, actually, until I read Jane Eyre. It's up there, okay? It is up there. Just the passion for everything around her that this girl has will inspire you, unless you're heartless. <laughs> masterpiece. I feel like I'm not really giving you excellent descriptions of these, but that's just because I feel like if you're watching someone's favorite books, I would hope that you would 
kind of only care if you knew the books, if you know what I mean. Like, this isn't a recommendations video. This is just a an insight into my brain video. <laughs> the next book, um, the next two are going to be a little bit iffy because I would call these my favorite books of all times, except like on a lesser level, like all of these have levels of my love for them. Okay. I would call both of these one of the best books that I have ever read. However, however, not as highly thought of as the rest. So East of Eden. <laughs> Again, obviously, it is one of the best books that I've ever read. I cried at it like three times. It also kind of encapsulates what I believe about certain things, about life, and about certain tro tropes in the Bible, because this is essentially what that is. He was retelling the Bible and the story of Cain and Abel. But this one suffers specifically from two things. Rereadability. I'm not sure I would reread this anytime soon and its treatment of women like objectively steinbeck is not the guy you would go to for writing about women <laughs> you just wouldn't the guy had four wives i think he cheated on one with the previous one you just wouldn't go to steinbeck for his treatment and opinions of women however this is his best work by far he put everything he had into this book and into his beliefs and the exploration of everything and commentary on the stuff from the Bible. 10 out of 10. So this is on a lower rank than the other two, but <laughs> again, it does belong here. And the last one I feel is also on a lower, lower <laughs> position. However, the atmosphere of this one, unmatched, okay? We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. Short ass book, but Shirley Jackson is the author for me. Her atmosphere building, tension building, like again, this is a short ass book. I was stressed while reading it. I didn't know what was gonna happen. I had discussions with my mother after we both read them about like what could have happened, what she makes you think, makes you question things, really stresses you out with her atmospheric just build up and just the entire setting of this book okay this is everything i want in a book the the mushrooms the garden the tree the slight spookiness but also not going into horror love it obsessed with it this is so far the best thing i've read by her and i've read a lot of short stories by her and haunting of hill house but this remains rain supreme there's also a black cat there's sisters there's poison the aesthetic of like look at this there's mushrooms and there's like spiders i just i love this <laughs> love this entire thing. i just realized actually that these two both have deckled edges and are like these special editions ironically we have always lived in the castle has this orange edition too but i love both of these editions they're actually really really stunning so that's it for the classics that's it for the classics Let's get into the manga. The last two classics, because I forgot, because I forgot, and they are new. They are new, are these two. <laughs> Look at him. He is so funny. I'm just going to hold up, I don't know, this one, because it's like vintage. Gogol. I suppose this would count as like favorite author of all time, but both Revisor and... Kabanitsa and <sighs> the nose and those short stories, he would count under my favorite books of all time because I adore this man. Okay, I adore this man. Nothing I've read so far by him I've hated. He's just my type of author. He's my type of author. There's all kinds of ridiculous that you can stomach and he is my type of ridiculous. Okay, I love him. Everything I've read by him, I've loved, adored. <laughs> So this goes under classics. I can't believe that I forgot it, but I guess because it's new, so I'm just not used to pulling these books out yet, <laughs> I suppose. I'm just gonna call this like miscellaneous <laughs> because I feel like I don't really know where to put this. Like technically classics, yes, but you know, not, not works of fiction. You'll see what I mean. This is going to be just a very short. First of all, mythology, <laughs> okay? Mythology. We've seen these books. I've talked about them this year, but I need to put them in my favorite books of all time. Let's go in order. This masterpiece. Okay, masterpiece. 
I don't like short stories, as I already said, but again, these aren't short stories. These are technically like myths and legends. And <laughs> if you're from these places, I'm so sorry because I feel like if someone were to romanticize the place where I live, I'd be like, okay, it sucks. How dare you romanticize the place where I live because it's garbage. However, I feel like everyone romanticizes something. Either it's the place where they live or a place where they don't. And there's always someone in the place where they don't live that is going to be very upset that they're romanticizing the place that they live in, if you get what I mean. So again, I want to live in Scotland. I want to live there. <laughs> I really want to live there. I spent six days there and I feel like I can't imagine living anywhere else. So it is what it is. Okay. It's my second home. <laughs> it's my second home. I want to live there. So yes, this wonderful masterpiece i didn't hate a single entry so if you're interested in scottish mythology and like their poets and their stories and myths and just writers in general this book is like a must a must read the second one is this which is just uk i've talked about this a lot <laughs> just uk so there's like wales there's wales northern ireland I th is there northern ireland though i'm really not sure now that i'm looking at it no, there's just Scotland, Ireland, Wales, and England. Also a masterpiece. Also a masterpiece. I didn't hate a single entry in this either. I obviously prefer some, some to others. Like, I really, really, really am attached to English folklore because, like, King Arthur and Camelot. I mean, come on. Come on. <laughs> you know, that's my favorite legend of all time, probably. So England and Scotland and Ireland kind of unfortunately beat out whales but i loved everything here i loved every entry this just feels again like it's my heritage from another universe okay i read these and i read the other one i teared up at this one actually at like two stories i think i didn't at the other one but i was reading it for a while so i might be misremembering masterpiece okay masterpiece these two mythology books have convinced me that I belong there okay because I didn't hate a single one which is extremely rare for me extremely rare so I'm just I'm sorry if you hate living there but I belong there so okay I, I'm sorry I do and the third one is my favorite um I don't know how to I don't know even how to say this my favorite philosophy book of all time yeah I mean it's meditations by Marcus Aurelius I briefly talked about this last year this could be considered my my holy book although again I hate I hate saying that because that's a stupid thing to say and I get it but I'm trying to convey a thought okay this thing I feel like was written by either by me or by someone extremely close to me 2,000 years ago, Marcus Aurelius, maybe we were cousins back then, I don't know. But everything he says, my brain is like, yes, <laughs> obviously, exactly. <laughs> so this just feels like, I don't know, I feel like if you want to understand how I think about, I don't know, death, life, rebirth, certain things, about philosophy. I feel like this would be a pretty surefire way to get into my head because this is exactly what I think <laughs> put down on paper. This is what my diaries look like. This is essentially the diary of Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor. Th this feels like my diary. If you were to read my diary, it would be a little bit different and a little bit more dramatic, but this would be it essentially. So I think this is it for miscellaneous, but so far I think you're getting a pre pretty good vibe of <laughs> who I am as a person, which is a bit revealing, but that is why we're here. I even have the necklace of like a moon and mushrooms. This is just my aesthetic. Okay. Now, as far as the manga goes, I, th I feel like this needs to go in the middle because, and you will see why, <laughs> you will see why, but Bunga, but specifically the novels, which is why it's like between books and between manga, even though it's light novels. So, you know, like they have, illustrations in them so like they're not they're a little bit manga like i suppose this would still count as both a book and a manga however only the books belong here 
the manga doesn't, which is why I felt like I needed to include it as soon as possible because it wouldn't be fair to put the manga on here because I disagree. <laughs> I think the only manga I put in the first video was Death Note, so this is my first or technically second favorite of all time in this category because manga-wise, it is still a Death Note. But like, you know, universe-wise, it is Bunko. <laughs> like, it is my favorite anime of all time. And my favorite novel manga of all time. Like, I'm tr struggling with this because the manga isn't my favorite of all time. I actually only own, as you can see over there, 13 volumes and I'm never going to own any more because everything after that is nonsense. <laughs> However, the story of those 13 and the novels that complete those 13 is my favorite thing of all time. So I'm struggling with categorizing this. <laughs> There's nine novels so far. I own seven and nine is coming out. I don't own six and I'm never going to own six. However, this, this is also specifically, I think, my favorite of all time in any Bungo, like manga, anime, <laughs> novel entry. This is my favorite of all time. It's the first novel. I've talked about it, this enough and I actually don't want to talk about it because then I will want to read it again. So technically consider this under books because the manga doesn't count. But I sort of think as the novels and manga as like one whole if that makes sense like every time i reread these i read them i read them in chronological order i read the novels and the 13 volumes of the manga that i do have in chronological order so technically all of that would count as my favorite in this entry <laughs> the next one is going to be my second favorite of all time or rather my favorite overall of all time and that's going to be <laughs> nausicaa <laughs> nausicaa of the valley of the wind that is my favorite thing of all time period. Period. I feel like if you were to ask me what my favorite story, message, character, trope, and drawing of all time is, it would be this. <laughs> I'm not going to pull it out because it's heavy. However, it would be this. I talked about this enough last year, so I don't feel like I need to repeat myself. However, it would still be this and it will always be this. Again, sort of like Marcus Aurelius. Jane Eyre and a couple of those other like more philosophical ones or like core ones to my beliefs, this one would be like number one. Number one, worldview, nature, people, animals, everything done in that I would say describes my beliefs to perfection. The last of the manga, let's go with the hard hitter anymore. Let's go with the hard hitter. <sighs> Natsumi's Book of Friends. Again, I've talked to this to death. You will notice that a lot of these, actually, which is ironic, kind of, have happened to me in the last year or maximum two. Like, my reading really picked up in 2021. 2021 is a bit of a shit show, but 2021 onwards, my reading picked up a lot of new favorites. However, a lot of them are also from the last year. <laughs> I've just no noticed that. A lot of them are from the last year. This one is from the last year. I've read it twice. I've watched it three times in the span of a year. This is just everything I want. If you were to ask me what casual cozy genre I liked, it's this. This is it, okay? In terms of cozy, this is it. Like it's borderline creepy, but it is so wholesome and so healing to your heart and soul because you have a character who's actually extremely traumatized and extremely hurt and lonely and just miserable in the beginning, but he grows in the spirit world and in the normal world. He finds friends in both <laughs> realms and family, and it's just this entire series is like the found family trope. <laughs> so if you're missing friends or whatever, this is gonna be the series for you. Okay, I'm I have nothing but love for this and I think of all the manga actually this is the only one where I'm torn between crying and laughing all the other ones are either laughing or either crying so it nails that balance <laughs> now let's just go into laughing um love of my life 
this series, I feel like I, I keep saying this about every single book, as if this entire video isn't about my favorite books of all time, but this, this, like, Life Lessons with Rami Chionisan is actually my favorite thing ever. Like, if I have nothing to read or nothing to watch or I'm ill, I will pick up this. I will pick up this. And I have picked it up when I was ill or just felt like reading something random because this is just joy. This is just joy. This is, again, my type of humor. If you really want to know my humor, just look at what I find funny. It's this, Sapkowski, and Gogol. Okay, that's obviously my sense of humor. A little bit dark, but also really cutting. That's my that's my sense of humor. Sarcasm, a lot of sarcasm. <laughs> but this is just a random ass story about people in their late twenties and early thirties who have a job entertaining children. And this brings me such joy that I cannot even put it into words. Currently there's just four four omnibus editions, which is eight volumes but i know that volume 10 is coming out in japan pretty soon so i'm like hoping that they make the english translation and give it to me by the end of the year because i feel like if this had 30 volumes i would still not be content i need more than that i need more than that i have never never laughed in public transportation <laughs> As much as when this came out, like I mean, volume four, technically I pulled out volume three, but last year I was coming back from university and I have a long commute, like an hour long commute from university to home. I was reading that and just laughing in public transportation. I could not be stopped. People might have been concerned about me, but I, I just never felt such joy. Never felt such joy. And I need a lot of it because this is one of those series that isn't updated online until the volumes come out and then someone uploads the scans. I need someone to start uploading those because I know that volume 10 is coming out in Japan and I can't wait for the omnibus edition. Just publish them online, please. I might even get Crunchyroll if I find out that they have these. <laughs> joy, joy, okay? If you want to be happy, just do this. <laughs> and let's just move on to the last one, which ironically, it used to be my favorite specifically because all I had read was Death Note. Now I feel like it's at the bottom of my favorites list. It is still my favorite and I reread it every year, but I feel like it keeps falling with every reread. <laughs> and that is, um, I almost dropped my stack and that is obviously Tokyo Ghoul. I pulled out my favorite cover for this. This is still one of my favorite series of all time. That's why it's on this list. However, and you're going to hear me out now before you get mad if you're a fan of this series, it is still on this list, I repeat. However, with more rereads, I actually kind of see the flaws. You can see how ill and rushed he was in the end. There was a lot more stuff to do. And you can tell how simple it actually is, which isn't a bad thing. That's why it's on this list. <laughs> That's why it's on this list. What it was setting out to do, it did wonderfully. However, on the whole, it's on the simpler side in terms of story and character development and just like ambition, like just ambition. The entire point of this series is like there's these two separate kinds of people we're gonna say and they're gonna need to learn to come together in the end that's essentially what it is like, there's nuance there's character development there's all kinds of stuff in here obviously but it's extremely simple if you think about it for too long because i've been rereading it every year i've been kind of forced to think about it and i just prefer stuff to not be this simple <laughs> I guess, but it is so wonderful. What it did, it did masterfully. Some of my favorite characters of all time and relationships of all time are in here. The drawings, stunning. But especially in this half, like in the second half, you can tell he undercooked it a little bit because he was already, again, ill and unwell. <laughs> so while it's understandable, 
I would have liked for him to actually like give the ending a bit more time to breathe, I suppose, but it's still wonderful. And I would still highly recommend it. It's just a little bit on the simpler side. That about wraps up the video. Now, if you were wondering why some series aren't on here, like, or a book isn't on here, there's two reasons for that. It's not my favorite of all time, as you might have guessed, or it was in the first video, <laughs> which again, I wouldn't force you to watch that first video because it's a little bit awkward, but maybe you can just like scroll through it to see the other entries on this list to properly get to know me because again, 90% of those still stand to this day. I mean, I made that video in 2020. It's not like I made it in 2014 when I was reading Red Queen. <laughs> so yes, most of that video still stands. The only thing I want to say about manga is that I mostly have manga that I still stand by. I don't buy manga that I don't like. So while I have like Flying Witch and House Husband and Attack on Titan and Noragami and Trojan X, all of those I either love or have loved at some point. <laughs> but they are not they are not my favorites of all time. So I'm not going to put them in a list for you to get to know me and my personal tastes and beliefs and preferences in literature. So I do hope this somewhat helped you to understand me as a person, as a reader, potentially as a writer too, because the stuff that we read does kind of shape what we like and what we believe in, which we're essentially going to put into our writing as well. So I hope this was interesting. I hope this was somewhat fun to watch. And if we share favorites, do let me know. I would like to hear that. This video is not for those people who disagree with me because if you disagree with me on this level, I don't know why you're here. I don't know why you want to hear what I have to say because you clearly don't agree with me as a person. So I don't think those people would be here anyway. So, or maybe you are. I can sometimes like watching people who I don't agree with simply because it's a little relaxing and I don't constantly have to think about opinions because I just don't care what they have to say. So I understand. I do understand. But that is it. That is it. I hope it wasn't, I hope it wasn't too long and I hope the sound was somewhat bearable. So I wanted like a bit of a cozy, cozy vibe to be honest. So I will see you in the next video, whatever that may be, because I am suffering. I am in the trenches of university. I will see you in the next video.